We are a people dedicated to the triumph of freedom and democracy over evil and tyranny. The heroic stories of the first responders who gave their all to save others strengthened our resolve, and our armed forces have pursued the war against terrorism in Afghanistan and elsewhere with valor and skill. Together with our coalition partners, they have achieved success. Americans also have fought back against terror by choosing to overcome evil with good, by loving their neighbors as they would like to be loved. Countless citizens have answered the call to help others. They have contributed to relief efforts, improved homeland security in their communities, and volunteered their time to aid those in need. This spirit of service continues to grow as thousands have joined the newly established USA Freedom Corps, committing themselves to changing America one heart at a time through the momentum of millions of acts of decency and kindness. Those whom we lost last September will forever hold a cherished place in our hearts and in the history of our nation. As we mark the first anniversary of this tragic day, we remember their sacrifice. We commit ourselves to honoring their memory by pursuing peace and justice in the world and security at home. By a joint resolution approved December 18, 2001, Public Law 107-89, the Congress has authorized and requested the President to designate September 11th of each year as Patriot Day. Now, therefore, I, George W. Bush, President of the United States of America, do hereby proclaim September 11, 2002, as Patriot Day. I call upon the people of the United States to observe this day with appropriate ceremonies and activities, including remembrance services and candlelight vigils. I also call upon the governors of the United States and the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico as well as appropriate officials of all units of government to direct that the flag be flown at half-staff on Patriot Day. Further, I encourage all Americans to display the flag at half-staff from their homes on that day and to observe a moment of silence beginning at 8.46 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time or another appropriate commemorative time to honor the innocent victims who lost their lives as a result of the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand for this day of September, in the year of our Lord, 2002, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 227th, George W. Bush. actions of our first responders and citizen heroes at Ground Zero in the Pentagon and in the skies over Shanksville, Pennsylvania were graphic reminders of the ultimate price we pay when we take an oath of office or when we pledge allegiance to our flag and our nation. In a world suddenly plunged into chaos and uncertainty, we became, again, one nation, united in our grief, but showing the world the best of our national character. Sadly, many, many families don't need to mark an anniversary of 9-11. They live with the painful reminders on a daily basis. Hundreds of New York City firefighters and police officers are now dying of cancer and respiratory ailments caused by digging through the deep debris fields at ground zero. Thousands of our soldiers, sailors, and airmen remain deployed around the world. 
seems most appropriate to me then that we remember the events of September 11, 2001. We need to see those graphic images burned into our memories. We need to feel that united national character burning in our heart. So we won't forget the values and the highest principles of our country. So that we'll not forget the cost of living free in the home of the brave. And so that we'll continue to support and thank those who made or are still making a daily sacrifice to keep our nation free and our people living in liberty. On behalf of all the men and women of the St. Paul Fire Department, I thank all of you for remembering. We extend our deepest sympathies to those families who are still grieving, and we extend our gratitude and admiration to the military families. We wish them all a speedy and safe return home and a joyful reunion at the end of their deployments.